Hello, my name is Steve Dolan. Welcome to YoungWebBuilder.com. In this video I'm going to give you an introduction to CSS and why it's so important. We'll start out, what is CSS? It stands for Cascading Style Sheet. The cascade part we'll get into in the second part of this tutorial, but for now you'll just need to know that CSS is a web language you write to make your appearance and layout appealing. That's the style part. So here's how it works. A style is a definition of fonts, colors, sizes. It's what makes your websites look nice. Each style has a unique name, and that's called a selector. And the selectors and their styles are defined using a CSS syntax. And syntax is the proper way to write an e-programming language. After all, that's what CSS is, is a web programming language that the browsers read and understand. So first, let's learn about the syntax of CSS and along the way we'll pick up some important vocabulary. This is proper CSS syntax. This line of code is called a rule. Each declaration is uh, each declaration is a set of formatting directions. A declaration is what's contained between these two curly braces that you see here. The text in front of the open curly brace is called a selector. Then you have an open curly brace followed by a property, a colon. The space right here is optional. You can leave that or or put it in. I normally put it in. That makes it easier for me to read. And a value for that property, a semicolon to close the property, and then a closing curly brace to close out this entire rule for the selector that you're making. The syntax, like in all programming languages, is crucial to proper function. For getting a brace, a colon, or a dash, it could produce some pretty random results and lead you to waste a lot of time. So next let's learn about the different types of selectors that we have. First is an HTML selector. This is when you can style an HTML tag within the page, the entire HTML tag. You can identify an HTML selector because its name is the name that matches that of what belongs inside HTML brackets. Next is a class selector. A class is a style that can be used by multiple elements. You can create names of classes without having to redefine HTML tags. You can create a class selector by placing a period or a dot in front of any name that you choose. A third selector is what's called an ID selector. Like classes, you can create the name of them, you can make it up if you want, but they're only intended to be used to specify a single style a single unique element. You can create a class selector by placing a hashtag in front of any name that you choose. So the logic is this. If you need to apply any sort of presentational formatting to content within a website, you select the HTML element and write the appropriate code that will style the element that you like. What is considered presentational is things like colors, background images, positioning, spacing, fonts, borders, text alignment, and underlines, things like that. CSS doesn't work automatically by itself. You need to tell the HTML tags to use the CSS. There are lines within the code that are necessary to link to proper CSS rules. We'll explore all the possible ways to do that in this training, but for now we'll keep things simple and we'll use what's called an internal style sheet. This means that all our styling information will be written inside of our HTML page. So let's take a look at implementing some of this CSS into a real life HTML page. Here on the left I have Adobe's new code editor called Adobe Edge Code. And on the right we have an HTML page that this code produces. I'm using Edge Code because we can see the live updates in this video without the need to refresh. So you don't need a fancy editor like this, but a simple plain editor will suffice. Um, but I recommend something like this because it has color coding. To use internal CSS, the styling information goes in the page head tags. So we're going to put a style tag right in here. And to start this internal style sheet, we'll just insert the style tag and close it up. So this is where our internal CSS will live, right here within these tags. So now the magic happens. We'll start telling the HTML page to render these CSS rules. Here's the syntax that we learned about for an HTML selector. Down below is the code that's necessary. For HTML selectors, CSS knows just to use the HTML tag. As long as we properly identify an HTML tag in the selector, then no other information is necessary with the HTML. 
Class and ID selectors are a tiny bit different. We learned a class selector requires a dot in front of the name, and as long as that's there, the HTML code will render this CSS rule as long as the HTML code reads that matching class name. So an example here, we have to enter class equals and then put the name of the selector in quotes here. So class equals is equal to this uh, dot right here. This is how you match the CSS rule with the HTML that you're trying to target. The same thing with ID selectors, except that we're not using a dot but a hashtag. That's how you identify an ID instead of a class. And in the HTML code, instead of class, we're using ID. So again, a class says class equals and an ID says ID equals. The big difference is the CSS code. One is a pound sign or a hashtag for an ID and the other is a period to target a class. So let's start writing some CSS using these examples of syntax to start styling this web page. I've already entered the style tags, that's where the CSS is going to live. And we're going to target, uh, let's, let's do an HTML selector first. So the first thing that we're going to write is HTML, do an open curly break, do an open curly bracket and close it. And inside of that, we're going to write a rule and we'll say background color and we'll put it uh, something like a gray and when we're finished with the property and the value we'll hit a semicolon to tell the CSS that we're finished with that and as long as this bracket is closed that's our CSS rule that's really all you need to write to make this web page gray. So I'm just going to save it and we can see that immediately this changed. Change it to something a little bit more dramatic for the video. Say something like red and we'll save it and it applies just like that. So that's pretty extreme. Just for the purposes I'm going to go back to gray so that's an HTML selector. What happened there is we named this selector HTML. So anything that's targeting HTML right here is going to be gray. Let's write another HTML selector. This one's going to be for the body. Open and close the curly braces. And let's give the font a more exciting color. I'm not crazy about Times New Roman. So let's change the font by writing the property for font. And that is font family and we'll put something like Helvetica or a sans serif semicolon to close it save the page and we can see that immediately all of the text that was in the body has been changed to Helvetica so those are HTML selectors okay let's try and target a let's do a class selector now so let's try and change this uh, this first headline right here now I could, because it is the only h1 tag that's located within the page, I could create a, an HTML selector. But let's say I have multiple h1 tags located across this page. I don't want to change all of them. I just want to change just this one. So I'll give an example here. I'm just going to copy and paste this h1 tag so that it shows that we have two of them. And we'll change one of them. So we'll make a class selector, we'll say headline, and we'll open it up the curly braces, let's say that we're starting our rule, our declaration, and close it. And in between we'll put the property and the value. So the headline class color, I want to be red. Let's go back to that obnoxious color for the purposes of our example. And a semicolon to close the declaration. So I'm going to save this and nothing happens. Why did nothing happen? Because I haven't changed the HTML code yet. Right now we're just looking at h1 tags. If I were to change this class to h1 and save it, then each one of these will turn red because it's an h it's an h1 HTML selector. But I don't want that. I want to create a class one headline we're going to leave just the same, but this H1, we're going to give it a class, 
of headline. Now again, you want to make sure that the class name that you're giving it matches what you're writing it into the CSS right here. Well, we have to make sure that we spell it correctly, save it, and we can see that just that H1 tag, the one that was applied with this class, was the only one that changed the color red. We can apply multiple properties to this if we want. If we want the font family to be um, a different, let's say we want it to be a serif, so we'll say something exciting, uh, something like Georgia, and close that rule and save it, then we change just that class. So you can apply multiple properties, multiple declarations to a selector. Now I mentioned that classes are, are, can be applied to many different things. So I can take this headline class and I know that anything that I apply with the class headline is going to be read and it's going to display in the font Georgia. So if I want this paragraph right here when selecting HTML, all I need to do is apply this class to this paragraph. Class equals headline. And we'll save it. Make sure I spell it correctly again. And now that entire paragraph has been applied with these rules. So you can start to see how CSS is really giving you some power. So what we've done is we've created two HTML selectors and a class selector. Last thing we need to do is create an ID selector. So hashtag is identifying an ID and we'll name it uh, first paragraph since that's what we're going to be targeting. We'll do the open and curly open and close curly braces to make sure that we're getting our syntax correct. And what I want to do here is uh, target this very first paragraph and let's change the size of it since it's the very first paragraph. We want it to be enticing for whoever's reading it. So I'll change this to font size and we'll change it to something like 20 pixels so that it's nice and large. And a semicolon to close that declaration and save it. Now when I saved it nothing happened because I still need to tell the HTML that I'm target that I that I would like to use this rule. So paragraph with the ID is first paragraph. Making sure that I'm spelling it correctly right here. First paragraph matches this rule up here. First paragraph. ID equals first paragraph. Open and close quotes. And we'll save. And we can see that right there the uh, font for the very first paragraph only has been applied with this font size of 20 pixels. So these are a couple of the examples of what you can do with CSS. In the next video, what we're going to do is style this page a little bit more and we'll explore some different properties and values for CSS. And we'll make this look like a pretty decent website. Part two of this video will be posted next week. Thank you for watching.